Hi, I'm Dave. And I'm Kelly, the customer service representative. And science person, all those things. <laughs> We're here on episode five, and it's how to create the optimal bee house. Yes, we're going to talk to Dave and say, Dave, our realtor, we have bees. We're looking for the perfect home sweet home. We know the garden is going to be this fantastic grocery store, but what about the house? I need to have the best place available. So tell me some details. Okay. So first of all, we are going to talk about, um, as we're looking through pictures of various houses you can oh, buy yeah. online and in various nurseries, you're going to be finding little tiny mm -hmm nuances that just actually make the difference between a house where the bees thrive and a house that's going to kill your bees right so we're going we to want that you'll, you'll learn those things <laughs> okay first of all just realize that in this perfect bee house it's going to be strong it's going to be make all these things right mm -hmm. not only will bees thrive in here but pests will as well it has lots and lots of tasty pollen excellent nectar source so the pests are going to want to check it out right okay so when we're looking at the nesting holes that the bees are going into, what you're looking for specifically are holes that you can open up and that aren't glued in. Mm -hmm. okay? So if you can't get out that nesting material from that beautiful, pretty house, it's you're... not going to help you. It's going to kill your bees. Okay. So um, when you're looking online, be very careful. There's a lot of things that are bamboo. Bamboo typically are too large, mm -hmm. and there's typically no end to them. In this particular picture, there are ends to them but it's so brutal to open up a piece of bamboo. So avoid this. And we'll tell you later on how you can save your bees if you have bamboo and you've used it. Right. It's cool. Okay, uh, next picture. So inserts, these are great low cost. You can slip them in and out of bee tubes, but if you only put the insert out there, God, the outside materials like butter. There's, that's a good <laughs> butter. Like butter. butter, like butter. Okay. <laughs> There's parasitic wasps that they'll go through just the bee tube and just the insert. So you really want to have both of them together. Okay. And um, next picture, when you're looking at these, here's that a good example, but the back side of these things need to have actually an end. Okay. So just like the reeds have the note at the end and the wood trays have protection at the end, this is the exact same thing. You need to have it enclosed. The parasitic wasp just goes right to the backside, and your love, your lucky little female, the last one there, gets nailed to the end. All right. So, <laughs> nesting materials that can be opened up and are thick enough. Let's look at houses. This is my favorite part because some of them are so pretty and they're so lethal to bees. It just okay. This one has been around a long time. Um, and first of all, <laughs> when you are looking at these houses online. If there's pictures of bees around the outside, are they honeybees? <laughs> if it's a honeybee, you'll see a lot of pictures of honeybees. Yep. The person is just making money. They don't understand bees. Okay. Um, in this particular example, your nesting house, the whole house, shouldn't be swaying in the wind. So having that up there, you want to mount it on the back wall. Mm -hmm. Nothing hanging. Uh, the outside you want to have, it's uh, got to be weatherproof and thick. So uh, that's going to fall apart. The first Pacific Northwest storm we have, it's going to be in little pieces on the ground. So invest your money in great plants instead of a piece of stuff, piece stuff. Of stuff. a piece of stuff. POS, <laughs> right. So avoid um, you want to have a, avoid houses that could mold and get ugly. Next yeah. picture, please. That also in that last picture, it was full of uh, bamboo that's glued in. So not good there. Yeah. Okay. This this one, I think this is, um, well, there's first of all honeybees around here. So <laughs> that's going to happen. It'll, it'll happen. Oh, I guess. Okay. But the house looks strong. Um, the only issue we have here is that the house overhang should be extended like another two inches out because mm -hmm. this is, this particular house is full of uh, solid cardboard tubes. They're going to get wet. And once they get wet, they start molding and it makes a whole big mess. Right. So definitely have a much better overhang, but it looks like it's something that you can put on a flat surface in the back. So yes. you are able so to put there. it on a fence post. All right. So thumbs up on that one. Next picture. Um, hanging again, uh, overhang here mm -hmm. again, a little more overhang. Uh, this looks to me that it uh, could be glued in. But at least it's six inches long. You need to have at least six inches for your nesting material to slide to the very back and then have another two or three inches of overhang to protect them. And that one does look like it's long enough so to do that. So good point. There's a lot of houses out there that are real narrow. Yeah. Uh, the, the narrower the house or the, you know, it's not that long, uh, your mason bees 
know where birds can peck in. So if I have a six inch um, full length, mostly males are on the outside and the, the good females are on like the inner third. As yeah. you shorten that house, they might have one female in the back and then mostly males. So at least six inches plus the overhead. Yep. Okay. Um, this one is swing in the breeze again. That one's good. We it looks like, a lot like our observer. That's yeah, nice. our bee observer. I like this one. I think it's well built. The plexiglass, you can close it. You, the bees will probably nest inside there. And screw so you can take off that plexiglass. So it's it's a good piece. I, I think this is a good product. Uh, I looked at this. This is a Western cedar, so very much similar mm -hmm. to ours. Good overhang. I think it looks like it doesn't you know, swing in the breeze. Yep. I think this is a good house. Solid. The only thing that um, I would be concerned with is are the... You know, are there holes? Are these holes glued in or not? Mm -hmm. This could be a good product. Okay. Um, <laughs> what do the butterfly researchers say when they see these things? <laughs> so, yeah, the, at the very the bottom down here, these guys here, um, someone a long time ago said that a butterfly would go in there and leave their chrysalis. Your butterfly researchers yeah. say the only really thing that goes in there are um, wasps, paper wasps. Well, stuff. earwigs liked them like to go Maybe. in there too. <laughs> Just, it, it's not for butterflies. Yeah. Um, the wood trays, um, I think if you ask, this isn't bad. The house well, What seems... about the backing? I mean, that's really the critical point with the wood trays. If you have wood trays and they have nice structure to them, you make them at home or whatever, that can happen. But if it doesn't have a nice foam back to it with a nice cardboard, then you're going to have trouble with the wasps getting Coming down in there. the backside. Yeah. Right, right, right. And again, the top uh, could be glued in, would be my only concerns. I think this particular one has, you can see um, some on the top and bottom. So if this is built to swing in the wind, maybe <laughs> you would, hate that. Maybe you could just hang it off the back one. Yeah. Okay, yeah. next. It is pretty. It now, is, this I would have on my wall at home. Yeah, I can see in, putting it in my living room. Inside <laughs> your house. But it's pretty. I like that inside, right. but I wouldn't put it outside. Okay, so nice butterflies and, and honeybees would be using this. Um, the pieces that impact, I think, the bees, yeah. you've got down below a whole bunch of, of uh, earwigs and stuff can maybe pop down there. Mm -hmm. And as the bees are gathering their pollen nectar, can just walk right <laughs> up and get to them. This is a little too narrow. Very much too uh, narrow. The house um, seems to me out of um, not great material, probably probably similar to the one we have here, yeah. falls apart easily. I think the, the top looks cool because it's got mm -hmm. metal on it. It does. It looks really pretty. I would totally put that in yeah. my house. Drill blocks outside. of wood up here. You can't get them out. Yeah. So um, of, I would okay. avoid. All right. What, what do you do if you have this? How do you protect your bees? OK. Um, before we get there, <laughs> next picture. That's it. Okay, we'll get there. This is what we just want to say. This is uh, one of our houses that inside here, the house is um, the wood itself is out of sustainable forest. So we are careful about Cedar. that. Yep. Yep. The overhang is about two inches total in front where the reeds are pushed back. And it's kind of hard to see, but you can see the um, cocoon hatchery. And we also have some that pull out that's an attic and that makes it really easy to put your cocoons out and to also clean it up afterwards so i'm a thumbs up on anything that makes it easy for me to clean that's right. great and all the nesting materials is here can be yeah. pulled out everything can be pulled out okay so back to your question what do we do okay. if we have a pos that is full of cocoons okay before even that <laughs> i just have a pos someone gave me one for my birthday yeah. all right yeah return it just Return it. Uh, an entomologist a couple of weeks ago from uh, mm -hmm. Chicago yeah. conversation, she said, Dave, it would be so much better if the person hadn't bought that death trap and spent the money on a native plant. Yeah. So rather than kill bees, return. And as you return it, tell them it kills bees. We want to have those manufacturers learn what would be helpful across they're the country businessmen who just don't know so it's not or one, they're business people business people and they just don't know bees right okay um so you've bought one you've returned it up oh, i yep. couldn't return it because the bees have nested in there already yep so we call this move day <laughs> Tell us what's going on here kelly well what's happened is we've already used this for a season and now it's full of cocoons we're going to go ahead and overwinter it. So we're going to just leave it in place. Leave it alone. Don't do anything. We can't get these bamboo out. And even if we could, I wouldn't be able to crack them open. So we're just going to let it sit over winter. 
Now it's the springtime and we're going to start seeing those mason bees emerge. So what we're going to do is twice a day, I'm going to check any mason bees that have emerged. I'm going to let them go. But since we've closed this puppy out so we can open up and let them out, mm -hmm. but they can't go back in a nest. So they're having, we're forcing them to move from Into a clean house, something that would, you could put this down below and have them just slowly as you're letting them out, go up above. The pests stay behind in there. And you squish them. Life is hard when you're a pest. <laughs> All right. Right, Dave? Uh, wow. Harsh. Okay. So that's how you can handle these things. Now your neighbor across the street, yeah. right behind the fence, what people don't realize is that's the vector. If you're taking care of bees, that's the vector where the pollen mites are being pulled back to the yard. The parasitic wasps are able to go. Nowadays, the Houdini fly comes out and that's the source of pests to your Bees. So just like the chemicals, if they're spraying their yard, it's going to be a problem for your bees. So just take the time to reach out. It doesn't so, have to be a conflict. It can just be your outreach. So in this piece, I care about bees. You've got this POS in your yard. And I don't know. It's pretty. So no, I just put it out there. Two things. Could I adopt your bee house? I'm going to first of all, <laughs> send you a link to this video so you know what's going on. But let me take care of the bees from your yard and my bees go across the fence they'll go in your mm -hmm. yard just fine so let me adopt your bees i'll do the move day to keep them safe to the house and then move forward from there i like that plan but you know you can also send me information on how to do it myself this you know video. what if i want to go ahead and mm -hmm. and learn this process okay um another idea is that if uh, we've got a brand new product out here that uh, we're trying to make this as easy as possible you don't Simple. have to have a big house go most of us have wood in our garage we have all kinds of materials that we can use to do it ourselves i'm going to take a pot bottle somehow and, and cut the ends mm -hmm. off and stuff in reeds so as long as your house is weatherproof has a i said weatherproof um not water resistant water resistant right you can't let the nesting materials get wet because then it'll just mold out okay and if you've got a plastic bottle or if you're using make sure if rain does get in there that you got a hole in the bottom okay this is mounted on a good surface that nice surface doesn't five move, feet away and you're so able you to take the nesting material out and crack things open so they can't be reused it's that simple that's simple i hope you learned a uh, go past it's important for us to have bees thrive across the country. So pass this to friends of yours that have POSs in their yard. Let them know if they have questions. Reach out to us at info at crownbees.com. We have links below on additional information on do it yourself, the new kit. Any question you have, just send us a drop message. <laughs> help us help your bees thrive. Thanks for watching.